I'm here with Danielle as a Zebulon's wife, actually. So this is the first uh, woman on my show. I'm very excited about it. I've been wanting to interview a woman to get her perspective on the gym because, you know, it seems like the, the gym is dominated by guys mainly. So Danielle, tell me a little bit about yourself. What got you started with the gym? So it was my husband, Zebulon. Um, you know, I had gotten bigger in high school, kind of like similar to his story, but maybe not quite as much. Um, and I had never known how to take that next step of going into the gym. I always wanted to, but I was really afraid. And so it was him being like, no, we're gonna do it on this day. It was our first anniversary. And so we were like, we just, we need to take that next step. And, so do it. was it like first like boyfriend girlfriend anniversary or uh, oh, wedding, first mar wedding marriage anniversary? Or? Yeah, okay. so it was after the okay. first year of marriage and like you know the freshman fifteen, but maybe like marriage fifteen, like yeah. first year of marriage fifteen. <laughs> I don't know. So it was um, just both of us coming together and being like, we're both scared to do this, but I can do it if you're right next to me. Yeah, yeah. So you're that accountability part. That, that, right. That's huge. You know, a lot of people are afraid to come in here with somebody. I think that's an important thing to make sure you come in to the gym with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's just starting at the gym? You know, maybe they don't have that accountability partner. Maybe they do have somebody. How, how should they approach um, that other person, that friend or significant other? So I would say just by you taking the next step by yourself, just taking that next baby step. It doesn't even have to be going to the gym. It could literally be like, okay, I'm gonna walk around the block three times a day. Okay, I'm gonna do it four times tomorrow. And then it's like, okay, well, I feel a little bit more confident. And now it's like, you can take that into the next step. And um, so maybe finding somebody, and once they see that spark in you, once they're like, um, you're doing something, I can see you're doing something. And that's where I've kind of ended up. It's like, I'll share my knowledge with them or, say, hey, you can come with me anytime you want. Yeah. I don't mind working out by myself because um, like, I'm pretty intense, so sometimes maybe like people <laughs> don't want to stay on my level, but no, I've gotten to that. that but, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it definitely takes time. Right. That, that's really cool. So you, you try and encourage people to, to come to the gym? Absolutely. Any, um, I cut hair, so I come in contact with a lot of people that say the same thing, you know, they're either hurting or they don't like the way they look or they think that it's not possible to get where they are um, but it's really just taking that one small step because if you're just walking you're laughing people that are sitting on the couch and that's, yeah. that's the truth yeah that's very true yeah it's mm -hmm. small incremental steps that lead to great changes mm -hmm. for sure so i have to take advantage that i have you on the show uh, the, like i said the first female um what would you give, uh, kind of advice you give to other females that come to the gym? Because I'm sure it is very scary. You know, guys are in here and they come up and approach, you know, approach a, a pretty girl like yourself. You know, what, what would you, what kind of advice would you give them? I would say that you have to stay strong. And even if it's just this veneer of strength, even if you don't feel strong really inside, but you've got to put that mask on that says, you can't mess with me. And this is my space. And just because they're men, and especially because they're in a gym, doesn't mean they get to push you around or take advantage of what you're wearing by Googling you, because there's a difference between um, appreciating and being disrespectful. And so anytime a man crosses that line into disrespect, I don't tolerate it. Like, I don't care who it is. If I'm friends with you, if I'm not friends yeah. with you, I squash it because then the next guy sees like, oh, well, she'll just let everyone stare at her. Like, not me. I won't, I'll say something. Yeah, I'll say or I'll right. look at them really like crazy until they just stop staring. Yeah, yeah so I'm curious. What's the, I guess, the worst experience you've had? Oh. <laughs> or or um, one that one is PG rated, maybe. Uh, well, <laughs> Let's see, like I have had, um, you know, I've had a guy come up to me knowing I'm married and saying that um, and he got really close to me, like this close, and he told me that if I was his wife, he would let me go out of the house like I was. Um, and I was like, oh, no, no, that's not how that works because I'm not your wife. Yeah. So, um, you know, it took almost a year to resolve it. It was a year of me giving him stink eye every time I saw him because he disrespected me so much um, but eventually he's like why do you keep looking at me like this 
because you disrespected me a year ago and I'm not going to forget it. I'm not going to let it go either. So yeah. It, yeah so you it to, made a mental mark in my mind. Yeah. So just, just like, you know, you come into the gym and you, you slowly build up that habit. You have to do the same thing with breaking these guys down. You, mm -hmm. you have to keep doing the same thing over exactly. and over again and let them know this is not okay. This mm -hmm. is not okay. And eventually they're going to be like, well, what's going on? Yeah. And they know. And, and that's why... I'm gonna say most of the men in here do know that like I don't tolerate disrespect. So you do, you, you, they will be as piggish as you allow them to be, and that's that's the truth. And they, it might still be inside, but at least they'll be treating you with respect, and that's I yeah. think really important. So, so don't play the victim mentality. A lot of times, and a lot yeah. of people, not just you know women, a lot of people like to play the victim mentality. Oh, woe is me, you know. And I like, can't do anything about them staring at me. Well, actually, you can. Yeah, you know, yeah. just by letting them know that it's not okay that you're doing it. Yeah, and on the flip side, what about a like I guess a positive experience? You know, not that it's really that yeah. positive, but uh, somebody that's you know kind of approach you respectfully because I feel like sometimes, like for myself, you know, I find it see an attractive woman at the gym and I want to approach her, but sometimes I don't because <laughs> then it's just, like, like don't want to uh, be misconstrued. Yeah. Um, I think you know when someone because I'm totally cool with other men that aren't my husband like giving me praise for my strength and that's what it is I guess complimenting a woman on her strength and not so much on what she looks like because that's what they're there for you know what I mean so anytime a man's telling you how pretty you are in a place that you're not here to get pretty you're here to get strong yeah and so it's like no tell me how strong I am because I am I'm really strong <laughs> so yeah. that's what I would say because I do um, have you know some really good friendships with some of the men in here that it's like, and I can build them up just like they can build me up. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, that's awesome. That's very, very powerful. I really appreciate yeah. you opening up like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's just starting at the gym? Um, I would say when I first was really getting into it, I needed more help with the motivation part and not so much the knowledge part because the knowledge part I would research on my own and you know I never had a personal trainer I just kept doing research and research till I found that but initially it was finding um, what's the word I'm looking for obtainable goals it's like I didn't pose you know I didn't think about where I would be now I was just thinking man let me find a girl that kind of has my shape that's like 20 pounds less and let me work towards that and you know I can see this and that inspires me Instead of being like, man, I've got 100 pounds I want to lose. Like, that might as well be Mount Everest. Like, I'm never going to get to the top of that. Um, but if you just set these little goals, and then I would kind of reward myself with um, fun workout stuff. You know, like, no one feels bad going to the gym with new shoes on. You know, yeah. it's like that. those little things that would just make you feel confident. Because mm -hmm. if you feel confident, you're going to lift better, stronger. You know, or at least like get going in that direction. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You know, you talk about finding something that's more obtainable. You know, because you look at all these Instagram stars, these Instagram models, and I mean, they just look like awesome. You know, guys and girls, they just yeah, and it's so unattainable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so unhealthy, really, where they're at. Or photoshopped. I mean, so many more photoshopped yes. as well. And that's and, you don't have all the information, and so it's like it's so easy to look on those things and say. Man, I want that. I'll never have that. But you know what? No one ever is going to be you either. Mm -hmm. Like, they can never have what you have. And so you just Very have true. to make the most of most of you. Wow, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And what, what kind of it, um, what kind of advice would you give to your younger self? Mm. Well, man, I could have been a powerhouse when I was younger. Like, I had no, I'm 6'1". Um, you know, I didn't really have a dad in the picture, so mm -hmm. there wasn't anyone to be like, hey, let's go play a game of basketball. Let me teach you the rules about basketball. Yeah. And so it was like my whole life I felt like this disappointment to mm -hmm. um, guys in that position, like to coaches, and they wanted me to be this great athlete. And I just, I didn't think that I could. I didn't think I had it in me, yeah. honestly. I never saw myself being here. Mm -hmm. And I'm 30 years old, so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, so it's like, it's, it's totally doable. You, Literally, you can do anything you set your mind to. I know people say that all the time, but it's first deciding, like, yeah, I'm at least gonna, I'm gonna take that next step, and that's the most, that next step is the most important, important part. You know, ten steps later, like, you just gotta worry about that then. Yeah. But first. Step. That's very true. Wow, man, that's that's really awesome. Yeah, you definitely 
definitely got a lot more confidence than what, you know, just, just from what you talked about that, you can tell there's a lot more confidence in yourself now. Yes, which is, absolutely. Which is great. Everybody needs a lot more confidence. A- absolutely. Well, not everybody. There, there are some people that are way too, too confident. But, but I would say yeah. for the majority of women in general, we need to empower each other. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I don't want to come in here and be catty. I want to come in here and build other women up. And I want women to build me up and tell them their strong suits about themselves and not have this... Um, like mm, mean girls vibe like I don't want to be the mean girls thing yeah, yeah. and you know just I think if we all had a little bit more confidence because that's really where it's coming from when a girl lashes out or gets catty it's from a place of insecurity yeah. so if we can all just have a little more confidence and know that we're on the same team and you know girl gang it up there you go mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. so. so what's your favorite thing to work out well you know <laughs> I'm gonna say like my glutes are my favorite thing to train just because I was born with quads like uh-huh. just these massive quads and and hamstrings and so it's, leg days are easy for me to get stronger at mm-hmm. um, but I think I enjoy training like my shoulders and my back because that's something that maybe younger Danielle would have been really afraid to do like yeah. to get bulkier like you know get more muscles but it's so cool getting stronger and knowing that you can handle your own and not, you know, it's like, yeah, I can do a pull-up, and I could never do a pull-up in high school, yeah. so. Speaking of getting bulky, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, a lot of girls are afraid to come to the gym because, and lift weights because they're going to get bulky and yeah. huge and look like they're on steroids. Yes. What would you say to those girls? I would say that's, like, the most opposite um, thing that I noticed, because I did take paths in my fitness journey where... At first it was, okay, I have this weight and I need to lose it. You know, I wasn't as concerned about muscle. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to build muscle, but I wasn't researching that. I was researching, you know, more effective ways to do cardio. And so I lost that weight and I didn't have the muscle underneath to give me the shape that I really wanted. So it's like having both equally to build and not just like too much of one or too much of the other. Yeah. Um, And so I guess it just depends on really what your goals are, but... Um, and some women, you know, they do want to compete. And, like, that's off. Like, you know, girls that have, like, just just as jack shoulders as dudes, I'm like, man, you go. Cause that's hard. Like, that's really yeah. hard. So, oh, yeah. But um, I would say it's, it's really hard to do that. You know, those women really have to work all the time to get their shoulders to look like that. So I don't think you could, you could come in and start getting bulkier. And yeah. if that's the case, then we need to reassess and look at what you're doing because then there's something that's just not quite lining up right. And that's where if you see another girl like myself in the gym that, you know, kind of might not have that catty vibe that I would love to, anytime someone would want advice, I would love to give it. You know, if they're like, oh, what, what's that you're doing? I'll, you know, I'll tell them right then and, you know, how they can improve that exercise they're doing that they're struggling with. Yeah. So. Well, Danielle, where can these these women you know reach out to you are you on social media anywhere i'm on instagram at danny underscore won't underscore stop yep danny won't stop danny won't stop yeah settle all right well danielle i really appreciate you coming out it was such a pleasure nice to meet you yeah nice to meet you too so real oh you yeah. picked a hell of a day to say it boy <laughs> because I, I know i know girls don't want to come to the gym because of how guys you know they they'll go up and they're afraid of that and okay. and i know it's out there but not every guy is like that so it's kind of it, it's harder to be stone cold with every one of them because mm-hmm. you know, we all be like that mm-hmm. obviously if you're married so it's a little different right. you can't be like i'm married yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think even if you're not though it's good to uh I'm sorry because you're a guy, but sometimes like guys need to be put in their place. Like, yeah, no, you no. can't just go up to somebody anytime you want. Say, so, yeah. where's my hug?